Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this podcast here for the Click Fusion Academy. I'm Danny J. As you know by now, we're doing this every single week uh, for you to check out and download. And this week, uh, I've got a very special guest uh, on this podcast with me. He goes by the name of Markel, uh, and he's from Quail Studio, and he does a lot, a lot of development in Firefly, uh, which is the new set of extensions that you can get for Click Team Fusion 2.5. You can get it now from the Click Store. Uh, if you're on Steam, you can check it out on the uh, on the steam page um, there's all sorts to be had at with this firefly it's the new set of 3d extensions um, and uh, i want to welcome you today to the show michael hey thanks for welcoming me danny you're very welcome i've seen all the work that you've been doing uh with the um firefly set of extensions uh, some pretty good stuff i mean how long have you been using it for um i got it when it first came out and i was kind of hesitant i probably waited two months before I actually dove in, started learning and teaching myself and getting help from everyone in Discord and the, on the forum. So prior to Firefly 3D, um, have you have you had any pre previous um, 3D experience with game engines or anything like that? Gaming-wise, no. Just pure gaming-wise. Have you done... Uh, do you do any kind of 3D modeling and stuff like that? or? Uh, um, when I was in high school, I did um modeling in autodesk inventor pro and then after that uh i use fusion 360 from autodesk in junction with my 3d printer that i have so i kind of have a grasp about 3d mm -hmm. and have never intertwined it with a uh, game development so as it stands the the set of uh extensions i keep, I keep referring to them as a set of extensions and i know they are a set of extensions for fusion 2.5 but i'm from now on i'm going to try and re uh, relate to them uh, or it as a product rather than a set of extensions because that's technically what it is now we all know yeah. that it's running off the irrelict uh, engine um do you know funnily enough i remember i know how hard uh chris who is kizguri from uh click team i know how hard he has tried to uh release firefly because i remember literally like six or seven years ago doing some of the first tests with chris um on um the extensions and that was like like i said it was that long ago you know so i've seen how far that it's come um and i think it's a fantastic thing now we get some users who who haven't even got Firefly, they look at some of the examples um, and they look at, you know, some of the uh, promotional stuff that's been put out there and they kind of give it a, they're kind of giving like rib shots to the, to the product itself because they're saying, you know, it's, it looks like it's aged and all this kind of stuff. And I just, I've got my opinions on that, but what's your opinions and your take on them? Firefly is its own product. And yes, it could be compared to things like Unity and Unreal. But as you said, Chris has been working on it for seven years now. And from my understanding, there's been three people that have actually worked on it compared to large scale companies that have more people dedicated to putting work into like Unity or Unreal Engine. Also, release wise, Firefly isn't even, it's been out for about a year in November compared to Unreal Engine being on its fourth installment or fourth major version and Unity being on its fifth major version. So they have a lot more of development put into it. And for $80 royalty-free product that has continuous improvement on it, it's pretty much, it's worth it. I agree. I agree. Now, I think the, what the issue is here is we, we have access to a product, um, as in Firefly, uh, that has so much capability just in the same way that fusion itself has so much capability but the problem is unless people explore the capabilities of it they're not really going to see that beneficial side of it now what i'm trying to get at here is if you look at click team fusion 2.5 yeah um, and you look at the uh, you know the introductory tutorial you get for that it's choco break you know it's a simple game of you know a couple of cheesy graphics you've got a guy spinning around with an umbrella and he's bouncing a ball up to yeah. some chocolate blocks you know that's just the basic introductory tutorial but then you look at what's come of fusion 2.5 for example five nights at freddy's knit underground you know the list goes on and on so that's the what escapist. The yeah the escapist that's what the potential you know it, it, that's what the kind of potential it contains now what i'm trying to get is if you look at firefly it's exactly the same in my opinion if people put the effort in then they're going to see the output is going to be the same yeah 
because I've done the Choco Break tutorial, and then I remember when um, Disaster at the Firefly Station first came out, and going through the MFA and actually playing the game, there is a lot of good things that came out of that, like the uh, the little animation sequence of the door opening and uh, going through the MFA itself, actually learning how to load objects into the engine. And yeah. Yeah, it's, it it can get pretty complex, but again, that's all that's all part of learning on the development side of things. We all know that when you first start yeah. out with Fusion two point five, no, when you know when you very first start out with it, nobody has a clue what a fast loop is. It's only when you get to that intermediate level, once you've gone through all the beginner stuff, that you start to you know figure out what things like fast loops are and what they're for and all that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I'm going to assume that fast loops are used a, a lot more in Firefly. I have to ask you this question because. I haven't personally myself had chance to do much with Firefly, uh, you know, with the million other things I've got going on in my life, and I haven't had chance to trial and error, and I know that you have because I've seen some of your stuff, uh, you've done some really good looking work, uh, and I just wanted your opinion on, well not your opinion, I wanted some facts on how easy it is to get into Firefly as a product and, and you know, what potential it has for people to learn more about it. Oh, while I haven't had any experience with fast loops whatsoever, that's Fusion and Firefly, actually. Um, I've been recommended to use it a lot. I just haven't gotten into learning it yet. As far as using it, you use the same event editor, the same kind of process you go through with Click Team Fusion, and that's really good since you don't have to use, or you don't have to worry about syntax errors or having a period or something in the wrong place because of the dialogue boxes. Um, when I were going through the forms and first off getting to help people are using trigonometry and calculus to figure out things. And I would go to Chris and ask him for help, kind of his opinion on, and there's already built in functions for the same thing that people were figuring out with trig and calculus. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can, I can relate to that. Yeah. Um, so in terms of, see, this is what I like about Firefly. I, I mean, I always said, how cool would it be? Um, this was before Firefly was released. I always said, how cool would it be to have a 3D engine that you could communicate with um, via the Fusion Event Editor? And lo and behold, we've we finally got it um, with Firefly. Now, I just I just think it's a little bit underhanded that some people, especially some people that don't even own the product, um, can take pot shots at it on public forums and on YouTube and all the rest of it um, when they don't even actually hold the product themselves. You know, so they can't. I don't think that they should be entitled to an opinion. Um, as to what any of the showcase stuff looks like because at the end of the day Chris and Triadian have put together these showcases over a matter of a week if you want to work on a serious game development you're talking a matter of months before you want to see start seeing a polished output yeah and another problem is people have to understand that Firefly is not advertised as a triple A product yeah and you cannot compare it to something that makes triple A quality games. You can't go into Firefly expecting to make Mortal Kombat 11 or something like that, like you can with Unreal Engine. And the give and take for that is exceptionally well. You, it might be an eighty dollar product, but it's royalty free. Yeah. And I've actually had discussions with people where it was like, "Well, Unity and Unreal Engine is free. It's free to use." But with Unity, you have a monthly payment after you make so much money. And with Unreal Engine, they take 5%. And I've actually broke it down using um, Scott Cawthon's Five Nights at Freddy's. The most, comparing the most he would spend on all the Firefly extensions, or sorry, not Firefly, all the Click Team extensions, and even if he did have Firefly, compared to what he would have been paying for something like Unreal or Unity. I, I, I'm I'm going to guess that there's uh, quite a lot of uh, numbers thrown around to to come to an answer <laughs> on something like that. If if um if I remember correctly, it was it's less than a thousand dollars for all of the Click Team stuff yeah. that he used for sure. That being the iOS extension, the Mac or not Mac um Android and the Windows and the de developer version, and then for Unity, it was about fourteen hundred dollars. I want to say, and that's a continuous investment because that price goes up every month since unity is price based or sorry um price is based on a month basis and then unreal engine was like 2500 or something around there. right actually sorry 22 22000 or something around that area 
It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. It's a lot. It's a lot of money. And and uh, I mean, <clears throat> one of my I've always been a pro supporter of the royalty um, method. I'm not saying that a click team should do that, especially for Fusion Three. But what I'm saying is, um, how cool would it to be to have a choice? You know. Um, that you can go down the uh, well. I mean, one thing that Click Team has always lacked um, is the assertiveness to push for a royalty um, on the on the engine, um, because you've got to remember that, that, that the runtime, even though, like you said, it's it's so cheap to purchase a product um, where you've got a runtime that's continually updated every single week. You know, you've got a bunch of guys that are. Uh, fixing bugs um coming out with new features and you're not paying any extra for that you know um and i think that's yeah. always been a good stance for click team to take forward with them so yeah like you said when people are comparing it to uh unity and the unreal engine and all that kind of stuff uh, they're, they're not weighing up the pros and cons um you got to remember click team's only a small company there's last count that i had was there was 13 of us um and you know it's not it's not as though we've got we, we we would do anything more than any uh, you know we would do absolutely anything to have more manpower but what can you do you know you, you've got budgets um you've got yeah. allocations and all that kind of thing and i think that firefly when chris came out with firefly it was like a, a little new breath of fresh air for fusion 2.5 yeah i remember when it came out or i remember i forgot where i seen it but i remember um saying 3d that Firefly will be a 3D extension or add-on to Click Team Fusion. And on the form, on the Click Team form, the first thing I've seen was people comparing it to Raycast or in the GCL extensions or something like that, asking how it will differ from those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw a lot of that. I saw a lot of um, I saw a lot of ways that people were trying to come in at different angles to a, more to. Um, almost critically analyze the product rather than actually look at it for what it is it's, um the teaser image or sorry the teaser trailers i looked at those and were just amazed that i can potentially in the future be working with 3d and basically not really knowing coding as far as getting into raw java or raw c or something of that nature yeah the, the loading of assets and the loading of textures and you know, uh, the biggest, I think one of the biggest pros to using Fusion 2.5 for 3D is, like you said earlier on, as you're working through your code um, and you're, you're, producing ex um, you're producing expressions, them expressions are checked in real time. Whereas if you was coding something up in, uh, in C Sharp and you, you've written a whole block of code, you would have to compile and test, um, you know, the actual project to see if there was any bugs. And if anything came of that, then you would have to revert back to the code. Whereas Fusion kind of babysits you a little bit, it kind of babysits the user because they're like, right, put in this expression and we'll calculate it for you and see if it's going to come out all right, you know. And even though it does that, you can still crash a game, but it's way easier to kind of troubleshoot that since you don't have to go through all the syntax. It's basically, does one line of code interfere with another line of code? And yeah. if you're commenting, then you that makes it easier to see where two lines of code could be interacting with each other. When it comes to um, Firefly um, and the potentials, again, I can't really say too much because I haven't really got much experience with it. What would you say the potentials of Firefly are in terms of genres uh, and possibilities? Um, you can do basically anything with Firefly. I know that Chris is working on a first-person shooter currently and there's the first person movement example out. Well, um i've recently done a third person or I've recently added gravity to a third person camera rig it's not the best but i mean you work at it and you learn better ways and that's just how you go about working with something um i know the the example file has a side scroller which would be pretty cool, make something like Sonic or the old school Sonic where you have different backgrounds moving. And I know someone in the Discord is also working with something of that nature with the billboards that Firefly has to make 2D sprites, kind of like a, a Doom kind of game, yeah. but a 2D version of it. I know Squatter has made, has actually remade Doom in Firefly, and that's how I first learned first person movement. I've seen some of the examples on the forums uh, and on YouTube. I have not, had, like I said, I've not had too much time to dig into them too much. Um, but when it comes to genres, let me ask you a quick: Have you have you done any much camera work with um, with Firefly? 
outside of first person camera, no. Um, I know someone has actually incorporated Firefly with Raycaster to get a follow, a third person follow camera, similar that to like a sandbox game. Mm-hmm. So eventually, I want to try to figure that out with solely just Firefly. That way, when Firefly is ported to other extensions, it will still work. Yeah, I was kind of that's the kind of route I was going down. Um, you know, when you, when you said you could, we could make like uh. 2.5d kind of games um side scrollers that kind of thing it'd be nice to be able to switch the camera angle to like a third person perspective uh you know at the drop of a hat i, I don't know if yeah. that's kind of possible in firefly i'm not sure um off the top of my head from what i see the camera is set up to face towards the sprite the side of the sprite and you can kind of add a trigger so like say you press f then you can move the camera and anchor it to the back of the sprite if you were doing actual 3D graphics. Nice. I also noticed as well, because it's the Irelix engine, there's uh, BSP support in there, isn't there? Do you know anything about I'm... BSP support? No, I do not. Well, BSP support... Something I have um, to look into. Yeah, well... B- the only reason I know about that is because when I was doing some of the earlier tests, obviously I was looking at the Irelix engine um and i i realized that it had uh, bsp support for it um and it one of the first engines to um utilize um bsp which is called binary space partitioning um was the quake engine which is going back to like way in mid 90s 96 something like that yeah. one of the greatest games ever built was the quake th- well one of the greatest engines ever built was the quake 3 engine uh, and off of that you had uh, a series um of games uh, soldier of fortune 2 you might remember that that was one of them um there was some there were star wars games um there was all sorts uh, and it was developed by id tech 3 and i know that you can um incorporate um some of the technology that was used in the for example the quake 3 engine um through firefly uh, i don't know exactly how you would do that i thought i would just bring it up because I, and i know it's it's possible i don't know how um so you know a bit of a dead end on that yeah, one, but I, just... I do i do remember seeing some quake 2 and quake 3 um file formats that i can import while i was kind of playing around with which just is, haven't explored that aspect of it. Well, which is excellent because it means you, you can develop your game engine in Fusion 2.5 and then somehow you should be able to develop um, a, a map editor of your own so that your users can build their own maps and import them into your own game in Fusion 2.5, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Uh, Wolverine. Kind of like... Um... Yeah, Wolfenstein came out. I remember Quake that game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and Return to Castle Wolfenstein as well. There was Quake Three, Quake Three Arena, uh, Soldier Fortune Two, the Star Wars Jedi Knight Two as well. The, you know, but what I'm trying to get at is how cool would it be for you to develop your own 3D game in Fusion 2.5 with Firefly, and then also release your own level editor where people can make their own maps. You know, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, and um, I know someone that is actually trying to work level editor i'm not sure what their actual implementation will be but um he was asking me about clicking on objects in the 3d space since it'll be kind of different from just getting the mouse click yeah yeah i understand yeah uh, i can't really say too much because i don't really know too much on that. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> from a from a from a beginner's standpoint of view if there was anybody out there listening that's not um, got Firefly yet, or not had or tried Firefly yet? Um, how easy of uh, an integration would you say it would be for a beginner to um, get up and running in creating something really basic? Um, oh, with Firefly, extremely easy. Especially if um, you go through the tutorial, you kind of begin. I know that Chris made a transpose system to kind of ease people in between the two D world and the three D world. And that's great for people starting off. As for me, even with a year of experience, I still don't understand it because I already had the mindset of 3D World from yeah. from doing our graphic designing. Sorry, uh, drafting. Yeah, I understand. So that's that's I, something I should probably look into for tutorial sakes. I understand your point, though. Yeah, yeah. That's like trying to change the mindset of someone who's already used to doing something a particular way. Um, yeah. This transpose system sounds really good. I'll have to check that out. Um, if it, is it available on the Click Team forums? Um, 
that I I'm pretty sure there are some forms about it asking for help. Um, basically, what the system does is it takes the X and Y position of click team and it transforms those into 3D positions. So you'll lose one of your axes, but it makes placement a little bit better. So for example, you can take the the 2D X and change it into 3D X and then 2D Y and change it into 3D Y. Or you can take the 2D X and change it into 3D Z and take the 2D Y and change it into 3D Y. So that way you only have... So if I'm thinking right then, then you can you could take the x and the y and you could store the z as an alterable value and then just render that in in the 3d side yes yeah and it does that automatically as long as you place them um in the right spot that's actually how choco break tutorial set up um you set up the, the border and then you take the 2d graphics and put them in to kind of replicate that and then you put your 3d static map or sorry, you put your 3D primitive inside of there, and then you put your static meshes array for your chocolate in there inside of the 2D border. Nice. So when it comes to Firefly in the future, um, is there any uh, sneak peeks that you can give us, anything that you know about? Because the, the Firefly community is quite uh, tight-knit, it's quite close on the forum, so people outside of the Firefly uh, little community don't really get a chance to hear much, but is there anything on the horizon that's that's going to be surefire for development in Firefly? In the I know Chris. I know Chris is currently working on um, changing the lighting. It's currently vertex lighting, and he's working on changing it, changing it to per pixel. And I'm actually waiting on that update myself for a, a game I'm working on. So I have a room that I created, and it has I want to say twelve thousand vertices, just for the lighting to work right uh, so. so is um, I'm, I'm i right in assuming that per pixel lighting will um take up more resources but will produce a better output is that right maybe um i know currently since i do have that twelve thousand, i have to have two versions of my meshes i have to have one that's visible for lighting and then i have to one i have to have one that's invisible for collision right because it'll slow the game down if I'm trying to collide with 12 some or collide my camera with something that has 12,000 vertices. Yeah, understandable. <laughs> uh awesome man, listen, I think we've touched quite a bit on uh, on Firefly today. It's been it's been good to talk to you. It's been good to finally speak to someone about Firefly who's who can who's a little bit more knowledgeable in that area. Uh, you've got tons of new stuff coming out as well. You've got a YouTube channel as well, haven't you? Yes, um I'm kind of integrating the YouTube channel with the academy for you at the moment so um i'm deciding what videos to switch over awesome just so i just so you can have everything in one place that way if someone sees something from firefly and doesn't understand it that's on a click team level they can just go over to wherever you have it set up yeah. i know that um i originally started i was going to flip flop between regular click team and firefly but um Taco, Almighty Zed Taco had his own channel with I think a thousand subscribers and he does videos weekly, which are pretty awesome. So yeah. We just decided to leave the base click team with him and I'll work on Firefly. Awesome. So we look forward to seeing some of your material, man. I'll uh, I'll make sure that a link to your channel uh, accompanies this podcast. But thank you very much, Markel, for joining us. Um, for this this week's podcast, hopefully we can touch base again in the future on a, on another podcast, and uh, hopefully we can uh, study a few more examples of Firefly and hopefully some polished productions. Okay, um, it was nice being on here. Thank you for having me, Danny. And yeah, there's a lot to talk about. Um, like we haven't even gotten to the different types of extensions that they have or what they do or anything like that. So there's plenty to talk about. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, we'll touch base again. Let's let's try and set something up. Maybe next week. Maybe we could even get Tria Dion in from Click Team as well, who's the lead developer of Firefly. Maybe we can get him on as well, uh, and you know we can just have a, a round table chat uh, and go a okay. bit more, a bit more in depth. That'd be cool. Okay. Right. Sounds good. Thanks, man. I'll speak to you soon. Right. Okay. Talk to you later. Thank you.